Here we go then, here we go. Let's keep it chill in the chat, let's keep it nice, let's keep it friendly. Bounce is alright, but other than that, let's keep it chill. Okay. So, Sephos coming in with even more short swords this time, which. Attacking. Okay, we can see that, maybe. Uh, but lots of lots of short swords coming in for Sephos this time. Love and devotion. Four pole waxes, not as many. A couple, uh, couple of muskets. So, one more musket than last time, I believe. A couple, uh, couple of short swords, and then a mix of everything. Has still no glaives, lads. Still no glaives. A couple of pikes, so I'm liking that. Liking a couple of pikes. So we've got some muskets, we've got some Shenjis and stuff for the defense, it looks like. We've got some Reapers, we've got a couple of Keshegs, not many, a couple of Modows. Um, very varied kind of units here though, which is good to see. Very varied units, which is very nice to see. Variation is the key to success in this game, not only in units, but also in classes as well. That has been proven time and time again. So the more varied your team makeup is, and the better. Okay, and here we go. I'm going to be able to move the camera around a little bit easier this time, I hope. Um, it's going to be far better than where it was last time, at least. <laughs> Please do remember though, there is a five minute delay. I am trying to chat to everybody as well in the chat. So I'm trying to keep eye and tabs on everything as I can. I'll flash up the scoreboard every now and again, just so you can kind of see what's going on. And we will kind of go from there. Someone has a very slow computer loading in, it seems. So if Sephos win this one, it will go to a draw. Each team will get one point. If Love and Devotion win this one, they will score three points for the week. We're only boosting them up the uh, scoreboard in the Discord. So it is an important battle for Love and Devotion, but also a very important battle for Sephos as well. They really do want to win this. Right, let's get rid of that. And let's get... Okay. Seems to be working a lot better this time. Good. Okay, so we can see actually there is a stack going for both A, there is a stack going for B. We are going to split stack this, which is quite interesting. Um try and bring it back around. So defenders that oh wait, look at the numbers on B. That is uh I was always called Sephir Sal, but actually they're they're very oh A is gonna catch them out. So there's a lot coming on to B. Uh, turn the music off. A lot coming on to B. Um, a is undefended. They're actually giving A, it looks like. Is there's, what's that, just one unit over there defending A? That is, I don't think, going to work out too well for them there. We got two pole axes and a long sword. The, the attack isn't that high at A, whereas they are now capping B. Look at all this range though, they're putting the damage out. They are hurting the Sephos team. Really hurting them, look. Sephos, really good kind of split attack there. A. How is A looking? Let's see if we can get to a player over at A quickly. So I've got to spend ages trying to zoom the camera in. A looks like it might be taken. They seem to be kind of falling back, Sephos. I would be straight stacking this now. Personally, there's nothing going on over at B. Love and devotion pushing them back. I may have got the names wrong at the start. I got a bit confused, I think. I can't even remember at this point. Love and Devotion, though. Red team. Really, really solid defense. Like, they have hammered that attack. So, a couple of 
close of Cephos have accidentally spawned over a B, which is going to cost them a bit of time. Five minutes still to play with, though. Both points will A only needs 15 to 20 seconds, B needs about 30 seconds to cap, so not full cap time is needed. Doing okay, they've got the time, they've got the time to play. Uh, unit wise, 800 for Cephos, oh, 1200. 1200 for Love and Devotion, which is again a huge, huge difference. A huge difference in unit count. So you can see the uh, timer, I just made sure. I've just had that message come through Targon. Nothing to beat, looks like there may be. So not to hit A again, although it looks like a couple may be. Are they retreating units? I think they might be. So they're probably going to be just trying to hit A at this point now. That is a naughty treb. That was a naughty treb. That took out a lot of Shenji's there. Look at that defense though. Look at that defense from Love and Devotion. It's just nothing really to break it. So coming in with 40s, not the best attacking unit, but they can sometimes do the job. Dual Blader is over there trying to uh, just sneak cap B, um, which will likely pull some of them away from A here, which is a very clever play. That's a very good play, because if the team's not that disciplined, can actually rotate a large number of players around, but it actually looks like there's only about three that have gone over, which is quite good. That's very good discipline on Love and Devotion side. This look. What an absolute melee going off here. Not a lot of cavalry we've seen though. As demonstrated there by the <laughs> the four critics that just went in. Not a huge amount of cavalry. Um all oh, Cephas look like they might be getting A here. Love and devotion are really going to have to try and get some units back down into there, but there's a lot of love and devotion players dead right now. Where are Cephos? They just need a couple more reinforcements right now to get in there. I would be telling that player who's running back to get his ass right back to A. Straight back to A. I think that, yeah, they, they had the snowball there, they had the Zerk, and it's kind of just gone a bit wrong for them. I'm just trying to position the camera a little bit better so we can get a decent overview of this. Two minutes to go, two minutes to go, they're trying to hit them with the trebs and everything, they're trying to soften them up, but I don't know, I think the defence might just be too much to kind of break now. Zephos are trying, they are really trying. Unit wise, they have knocked out a lot of units, but there's still, uh, still definitely less units for Zephos. Look at all this stack now on... Uh, on A though, that's going to be difficult to break. What's that? Palace Guards, Mordal. There's a couple of Outrider units. There's 40s there ready to rock and roll as well. Yeah, I don't think A is the right call right now. I would be trying to just do a a full rotation, I think, over to B. Anybody that has Cav, rush your ass over to B. Anybody that kind of has melee units, stack at A. Just put a bit of pressure on there, but they are really going to have to kind of think about what they're doing now. We got time for one last solid push. One last solid push here. And they are split pushing, so there's a couple of people over at B look. Uh, most of the team has gone over to A. It's all all about kind of getting that those points cleared as quick as you can. There's a lot of people that are rotating over to B to try and counteract that. There's a lot of people that may be detriment to them on A though, but A is looking fairly solid. So B is probably the kind of weaker spot for Love and Devotion right now, so that rotation might have been the right call. Um, God, just get on the point though, lads. Get the point cleared that you are just letting everybody run up to it. A does not need luck, a lot of capping though. Cool, this is, this is a beautiful split push. This They're taking B, they're taking B, they cannot stop that now. Score themselves just 
just a little bit of time. Two minutes they scored from that. That's not a lot. So personally, now if I was defending, I would be sticking a load of people just to sit on C and sticking a load of people just to sit on A still. Just to sit there. Because you do not want them taking A. We'll see, which is <laughs> what they're doing. But I don't know why these guys aren't just taking, taking A. There's so many of them here, look. This dude off here is taking C or trying to think the problem with taking A is it gives you the two minutes plus it gives you this AI spawn here which actually does add to your time but it also spawns AI berserkers which even as AI those berserkers are a freaking nightmare when they come rushing into you. Uh, Love and Devotion still sitting pretty with double the unit count though which I think is probably going to score them the win if I have to call it right now. Um, obviously just higher numbers doesn't mean higher quality of troop though so it's going to be interesting to see watching these games actually played without any artillery though is a very interesting rule it's a very good rule I think personally as well because it's all now dependent on the skill of the players and not just a lucky kind of mortar shot that they could score in looks like Love and Devotion are giving C away though they're, they're letting uh, Sephos have that free although for some reason it just danced off it I'm not quite sure why um, AI Berserkers are spawned so what they're going to do now is actually just rush all the way up there which even like I said they're AI they're not great but they are annoyance they have to be taken care of because they can still do a fair bit of damage looks like it's going to be a solid old fight on the last point here though this is where it's just going to come down to the quality of units and the amount of them left wow look at love and devotion they are putting in a very aggressive defense here they're not just sitting back on their laurels and just waiting for them they are pushing them they are making sure they are not getting that zerg although it looks like it's going to be a very difficult thing to stop with the amount of cephos there already teamed up look ready to go Love and Devotion, a lot of green pikes. Uh, it may not be enough. Martel the Tories kind of sat at the back, Woodcut sat at the back. May not be enough for them to actually uh, crack on, but it's going to be something. Got Outriders, got 40s, got some decent units still, but Sephos are just slowly kind of clearing the board of Love and Devotion. Love and Devotion needs to kind of start playing a little bit clever now because their aggressive defensive style is starting to cost them players which even if they don't have units a player can stop a cap on the point by just actually sitting on it so it's quite important for them to have players alive the whole time so far still have one trip but they have used all the other trips which is very good to see that they are utilizing the trips um, units yeah 232 to 488 that is a massive difference still. A massive difference, but like I said, lo love and devotion, loads and loads of greens and greys. Not the best of units. They're okay, but Pipe Militia recently has had a bit of enough. Thank you very much, Mr. Nine Fingers. That's what that alert was for just being raided. Um, by a fellow CB Rivals caster. A damn gentleman of a CB Rivals caster as well. Definitely check out Nine Fingers' channel if you haven't already. He is one of the main casters for the tournament as well. Uh, straight back to the game. So it's a uh, cheeky pole, like I said, I was trying to hit him in the butt, but he's kind of been caught out there. Sephos uh, just have not managed to gain the. Uh, the momentum to kind of just stack up though they they've really been broken here by love and devotions constant kind of poking it's kind of stopped their their ability to kind of stack up and zerg still got time still got a little bit of time to go not a huge amount so they can't be fannying around they are going to have to decide in a minute what they are going to do is starting to get a little bit spicy. A little bit spicy. What are these guys doing? 209 to 434. Last trap has been used as well. It looks like a lot of them just have heroes at this point though. 
Yeah, look. There's not a lot of units left here. Although, considering there's more units definitely on the Lavender Bush side, but look at all those greys, look. Look at all these greys. Only a couple of blues and purples. So their actual unit quality might be what catches them out, especially if that person with the uh, Keshigs can use them well. Looks like they're launching though. So Sephos, last ditch effort here. This is their last attack. They are not going to have time to kind of stack up and go for this again. If they can get in and get this cleared and manage to block off the spawn, they may be in with a chance here, but they are too split up. They're getting pushed back. I'm not quite sure what they thought they were doing there. The Keshigs have just come in. They ran straight into those palace guards though. Look, they have just had a fucking awful time about it. Absolutely smashed in the face and by those palace guards. This is now just an absolute melee and a brawl. I think Love and Devotion though are slightly in favour with the amount of heroes and units now still on the point. Sephos, last ditch effort, I don't think it's going to be enough for them. One minute left, and you need at least 40 to 45 seconds to actually cap the point. Uh, this is 20 seconds tops. They've got to kind of clear this point now. They've got that big old kind of palace guard unit sat on the point now, though. Sephos has been pushed back. Huge amount of them are dead. Sephos, I think, unfortunately, as good as it was, I think this is game over. GG's for both the teams. Love and Devotion, uh, definitely take this one though. Three points to Love and Devotion. So far, zero points. So obviously they just don't move wherever on the table. They just stay where they are. P teams will overtake them, but hey, we've got plenty of weeks left yet anyway. So it's been a very good couple of games on what I think is actually one of the best maps in the game it is a very nice kind of compact kind of map and it is definitely more interesting without the use of artillery it is far more interesting to be honest using artillery i think kind of mm, doesn't upset the map but it kind of makes it less fun but like i said gg's love and devotion absolutely smashed it both attack and defense sephos really really did hammer them though it wasn't an easy game either way for love and devotion top work to both the teams uh if i've still got my predictions up so love and devotion take it again so gg's to all of you guys and girls that have scored some clean points there Apologies for the initial kind of camera buggage and all that, but we will be sorted. It will be better next week. Just going to go over the team stats very quickly. Loads of top scorers. Look. Loads of top scorers for Love and Devotion. Couple for Sephos. Loads of loads of unit kills. Look. More kind of spread out for Love and Devotion, but some real top plays from uh, the Sephos boys. Just didn't work out for you, unfortunately, this time, lads. We're going into the post analysis. Uh, look how close it is. Look how close. And now, uh, boop. <laughs> straight up. Straight up. And that is just kind of. That was it. That was the last ditch effort. It didn't go well. Uh, 